at this point um, have you review some more with your team the parts and uh, we'll let things dry and then we'll get ready for section two um, so nice job today So we're going to work and um, install our shock cord mount um, into our body tube and I've seen students make a mistake where they actually take the mount, they just glue it or we're going to actually epoxy it in and they just pop it right in the top of their, their body tube and that's a big mistake because if you do that, you can see here, this is our nose cone, there's an area, there's a ridge and then there's an area that sticks down just over oh, between two and three inches and this has to slide, this acts as a coupler that hooks the nose cone and the airframe or the body tube um, together. And if you try to slide this in there and that mount is placed right at the top, this won't go in. And that's a problem because to pull this out, it's A, very difficult, and B, will likely cause some damage to your airframe. So what I've done is I make a mark about three inches down. And the reason I say about three inches down is because, I'll go like this, if I measure this out, it is about three inches that this coupler area extends down into the tube. So I just kind of eyeball it. I say three inches, put a little mark. And I re Remember when you're using epoxy, you want to make sure you use gloves. Um, you know, the gl wood glue, not so bad if you uh, use your fingers. The epoxy, it's uh, at the very least difficult to get off and it can, can burn uh, and irritate skin for some people who are sensitive to it. So I want to make sure we use our gloves when we're installing our shock cord mount. Once we get our uh, shock cord mount installed, then we'll finish working with our shock cord, getting that set up, and we'll get the parachute on. And um, then we'll be in really good shape. Uh, at that point, we'll just have a couple little things to do, then we'll get ready to paint. So it's important at this stage uh, to really review the rubric to make sure you know all the parts of the rocket so you, you get a high score on the uh, knowledge piece. Um, check the main structure of your rocket of course to make sure everything is being glued together and has been reinforced we're going to use five minute epoxy uh, because it is stronger than the wood glue um, when you're using epoxy i suggest always using the gloves and we do have safety uh, glasses um, available in the the kits we distributed so i would suggest putting on the safety glasses as well this can be a little bit tricky. It does have a stink to it as, uh, also, so uh, you, you know, work in a, a well-ventilated area. Here two different materials, and there's a chemical reaction that creates a, uh, a material that is extremely, extremely strong. We're going to use that to hold our shock, shock cord mount in place because that shock cord mount takes a tremendous amount of force when the, uh, the ejection charge goes off inside the rocket, forcing the payload compartment out and the shock cord mount is what holds the payload compartment and the nose cone to the main airframe um, and really is the the first part of the recovery uh, of the rocket because the, attached to the shock cord is the parachute and if the shock cord mount doesn't hold uh, the top part of your rocket will have a parachute and that'll come down nice and easy but the airframe this will come down and when it hits the ground it'll hit without a nose cone and it'll be moving very fast and it will totally destroy this rock. Start just by snapping the ends off. You can see it starts to ooze right away. You hold on to this piece. Um, and the way this works is you squeeze it out, equal parts. You squeeze equal parts out onto into a bowl or into a, onto a plate. And I'm going to put a good amount here. Then when I want it to stop, I actually pull this back up a little bit. There we go. And you're not done there just yet. So I'm going to apply this, get that on there, there. Uh, you actually take a stick and you can see where it's divided still. It's separated. And you take the epoxy and you mix this together. So I'm going to put epoxy on here. I'm going to get this down. Let me measure. There's three inches. So I need to get down to about the 15 centimeter mark on my ruler. So once I get down to the 15 centimeter mark, then I'm going to take my epoxy. So I'm going to slide this in like so, get to the 15 centimeter mark, flip this over, smear it around my ruler. By the way, 
So let's then slide this down to 14. That way I know I'm at least three inches in. And I flip this over and it can be anywhere in the inside. Okay, so right now I'm transferring it to the rocket itself. I'll mix a little more up. Make sure I have enough on there. And I'll put the mount itself. Draw this back up, sucks that back in. And I'll put the mount right in here. So mixing this back up. To me, this is always the hardest part of putting the rocket together. Get some on these strings as well. And now the tricky part, the only tricky part left with this is getting it to the point where I'll slide this in. I'm actually gonna go past the 14, bring it back. In there, I can feel the heat from that epoxy inside as it bonds. Look at my lights. So I've got the tube and notice or the, uh, I have the airframe and way down in there, I have my shock cord mount. I'm just trying to get it pushed in place. So there's some nice contact against the wall of the main airframe using the epoxy. An old piece of trim I had laying around, I'd say probably a yardstick or a meter stick would work best. If you have an old one laying around and I've just really pushed that shock cord mount 